Hello and welcome to the Door to Door YouTube channel. Today I want to talk a little bit about garage door openers. So there's several different types and many people ask me what's the best and that really depends on the application. So the three main types of openers that we mostly focus on, there's the chain drive, the belt drive, and the side mount to the uh, jack shaft operator. And all three have their applications and their purpose. The most popular would be for us that we most commonly use would be the chain drive unit. They're just good solid workhorse machines, nice sturdy bicycle chain to uh, run the door up and down. Um, sometimes you'll see them with a half chain, half cable and some of the more inexpensive and uh, homeowner style piece rail models. But overall a good solid design that fits and works on most residential doors. Um, next you would see the belt drive. They're probably our second most popular. That's similar to the chain drive, but instead of using a chain, it uses a rubberized steel reinforced belt. That belt lifts and lowers the door, similar to like a car belt or a fan belt. Very reliable. Uh, biggest thing with the belt drive is that rubberized belt eliminates a lot of the noise that you would get from the chain, kind of making some noise clacking around along the rail, where a steel reinforced belt, you don't get that noise. So get some motor noise, you're obviously gonna get door noise eliminates a lot of the noise. So if your bedrooms are above the garage or just noise in general is a concern, belt drive is definitely the way to go. It's gonna be your quietest. And third would be the side mounted jack shaft units. These get mounted on the sides of the door. Um, the way they work is there's a torsion tube spring above the front of the door. Those springs actually lift the door. And what this does is rather than pulling and pushing with a trolley, it uses the um, torsion tube and actually turns that tube to lift the door. So to use that, you do need to have a torsion spring set up. So if you have an extension door, um, it's not gonna work or you could convert it. And we typically only do those on high lift applications or applications where it's just don't have the room to do a standard draw bar. Only reason being with the side mounted openers, you need to always have weight on that bottom section. If the bottom section gets hung up or gets a little too light, uh, it can throw the cables. They do have cable tension sensors when they do feel some slack in the cables, we'll stop the door completely so you don't risk throwing a cable. Um, and basically when you throw a cable, you know, door can go crooked, it's gonna get stuck and you usually need us to come put it all back together for you. So it's one reason why we're a little hesitant in some applications to use the side mounted, but they are a great option because they clean up the uh, ceiling. You don't have it hanging from the center of the ceiling, it's sitting on the side of the door, kind of tucked in and out of the way. So they're getting very popular now. Um, before they were really only commercial application, but in the recent years, they do have side mounted residential units that are approved for in-home use. So those are getting more and more popular. We typically do them mostly with the high lift, which is where the door comes up before it starts to go back. A lot of times you'll see that if you have a car lift you're trying to uh, put in, so that way you, the door doesn't just come straight back. You got a little bit of ceiling height. Um, or if you're just trying to utilize a tall garage, you can get the side mounted opener and pair it with a high lift setup to uh, to make that a little bit more functional for you. So those are the three main ones. An honorable mention would be the screw drive. You don't see too many of these anymore. They're not my favorite. It's more of a cheaper, or I said cheaper, but a less expensive option. So that uses a worm gear that turns in a plastic carriage. The keyword being there, plastic, to lift and lower the door. My biggest concern there is one, it's very noisy, and two, the everything being plastic, and most of them, means that they strip out and break because it's plastic. So I, we don't really install those. We'll work on them. We'll fix them if they need fixing, but that's kind of not something we do too often anymore. They were popular a few years ago. Uh, Genie made one that a lot of people use back in the day, but now usually you're either going chain, belt, or uh, a side mounted opener. Those are the most common ones that we do. Um, there are some direct drive units that actually have a, uh, a little machine that kind of crawls along the rail and operates the door rather than the standard trolley. Um, we haven't done a whole lot of those, but we might get into looking at those a little bit more and uh, seeing what they're all about because they've got some neat, uh, some neat innovations there, but they're still a little bit newer and not as popular as the other three. But that's basically it. So it really depends on the application. If you're trying to save noise, um, chain drives tend to be a little bit less expensive than the belt drive. So it's noise not really a concern. And the modern chain drives 
a lot of them now, um, like the LiftMaster 8160W, that's probably one of our favorite machines right now, uses a wider sprocket that keeps the chain away from the rail so you really don't have that much of a noise. Plus they're all using DC motors now versus the AC motors, which tend to be a little bit louder. So between those two factors, the chain drives are almost just as quiet as the belt drives anymore. Um, and you can save a couple of dollars if you want with a chain drive over the belt. So each motor has its own application, depending on the needs of your garage. If you're worried about noise, reliability, or you want to keep the uh, ceiling cleared up and think the side mounts would be the way to go for your home, um, we're always happy to uh, talk to you about the different openers that we have available and which ones we think might be best for your home. Uh, like always, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, thanks. Bye.